Hello guys and welcome to another profile tree video. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a content management system called Drupal. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. So for those who don't know uh, Drupal is a pretty powerful website builder and it helps you create and manage websites easily. Now you've also got your customization options. If you guys have ever used WordPress it's very similar. You can customize your site's design, you can organize and publish content, and of course you can add features like user registration, a search functionality, and pretty much anything. Now, it has a large library of add-ons that can extend its capabilities. So these extensions could be anywhere like security extensions, you can add forms as well. So pretty much anything that you can think of, you can add to it. Now, as well as this, uh, it's got a pretty supportive community that provides ongoing updates and assistance if you need it. And I would say that Drupal is known for its flexibility, security, and scalability. So hence why this CMS is a popular choice for small businesses and large organizations alike. So now that we've got an insight about Drupal, we're going to go ahead and find out the few ways you can download Drupal itself. Now, there's a couple of options here uh, on doing so. You can do the manual installation. So this is the manual installation here. So if you visit the official Drupal website, which I'll have on screen now, uh, you can go ahead and extract the files. So it comes as either so you can get it with the composer if you want to or where you'll need php and composer to run the commands so that will use a little bit of the command prompt or you can use the drupal with a composer so you've got the a couple of the options there as you can see so all you would need the two so i'll have the manual installation on screen now so download drupal from the official drupal website so HTTPS uh, www.drupal.org, then extract the files. Then all you need to do is create a database for Drupal on your web server and configure the necessary permissions. Next is to upload the extracted Drupal files to your web, web server using FTP or file manager. And then run the Drupal installation script by accessing your website's URL in a website browser. And then next, follow the on-screen instructions to configure Drupal, including database connection, details, and site settings. Now, that's one way of doing it, which is the manual installation. You can also do the one-click installer. So some web hosting providers offer a one-click installer that automate the Drupal installation process. So log into the hosting control panel and look for one-click installer tool. So there's different uh, options there. I'll go ahead and search them up for you guys. So uh, you've got Fantastico. Fantastico. And let's see if we have the control panel. So this is it here. So you could use this, uh, so just log into your hosting control panel. Uh, this, is, this would be a one-click installer tool. Um, there's other one like uh, Sphalicus. Uh, let's see if I could search that up for you guys. This. So this is one as well. And then your last one, so yeah, you can read a little bit more about it as well. Take a look at how to go into the control web panel. And our last one is Installatron. Installatron. So you could use these three tools to actually log into the hosting control panel. And then once you've got this, select Drupal from the list of the available applications and make sure you provide the require the required details which would be the installation location and the administrator credentials once you do all that you'll get you'll obviously get the control panel just letting you know uh whether you accept it and stuff uh once you've done that 
click the install button and the installer will handle the installation and setup of Drupal automatically. So the method that we're going to be using in order to download Drupal is the local development environment method and it's using the likes of XAMPP, WAMP or MAMP on our computer. Now the one that we're using here is XAMPP uh, on Windows. So you can see that you could use it for Windows 7, 8 or Windows 10 or 32-bit or 64-bit. So just make sure that you check on your program uh, what you're actually running on your computer, whether it be 32-bit or 64-bit, and just make sure that you're running Windows 10. So what we'll do is we'll download the XAMPP for Windows from Apache Friends. So we'll go ahead and download that now. So we could see that we have a download for Windows. So we'll just uh, click on that. And now, as it says, if it doesn't start automatically, just click here. And this should give us the option to download Windows. So we'll click on Windows here and then click on the latest version. Now, uh, depending on what you guys have, uh, if you have Mac OS, Linux, uh, then you can go ahead and download through there. But we just need to download the latest version and that'll just activate that straight away. Takes a couple of seconds to download. So now that that's on our installer, you can see there takes a couple of minutes, so we'll go ahead and fast forward till that is downloaded. So now that it's downloaded, all we need to do is open up the XAMPP server. Uh, so you'll, you will get a user account control uh, pop up. So I've got one there now. So I'll just go ahead and uh, say yes to it. So it is now loading up. So you can see there. Um, We've activated the user control, we'll say yes. So this is the setup, we'll go ahead and click next. Uh, we're happy enough with the content there. So we've got the MySQL, FileZilla, Tomcat, and okay, so happy enough. Uh, we'll just click on that folder, click next, and we're ready to begin. So that'll now install the XAMPP server so we'll wait for this so i'll go ahead and skip forward again and get back to you guys when this is finished installing so now that we've finished go ahead and just click finish on the installer so we should get another pop-up here as you guys can see so this is the xampp control panel so there's a couple of things that we want to do here and what we want to start is the Apache, and we also want to start the MySQL. So we'll go ahead and allow access. Okay. So that's what we've started now. So as I, as I was saying there, uh, you can see that our module Apache and MySQL is running. Now, if you are having an issue of running it, so I did actually run into the same problem, which is the port 80, which was my problem. Go on to your configuration, go ahead and click on the Apache HTTPD.config. Go ahead and click on that. Now, what you want to search for is just hit Control F and go ahead and search up Listen 80. And then once you search that, so currently, it, it says 8080 or 8080. Um, what you want to change that to is, so it will say less than 80, change it to 8080, uh, as you can see. Now, your next one will be your localhost. So search up localhost. And then let's see if we can find it here. Localhost colon 80. If I try that, okay. So again, I changed that to 8080 and that should work. Now, if I go ahead and demonstrate how it looks, go ahead and don't save. I'll actually stop the Apache. I'll go to the configuration again and then we'll search up the 
localhost do that and then listen eerie And then I go ahead and save that. So I start this. You can see that it's shutting down unexpectedly. So every time I start that up, it just uh, closes down. That's because of the block port. And that is the fix for the block port. So just change, listen, 8080. And then we'll find the area again there. So change that back and then click X and save. And if I start that, you can see that it's uh, working fine. So now that we've covered that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next step. So our next step is to actually go on to the XAMPP docs. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new folder for the Drupal project. So I'll put it up on screen now. So it's c colon forward slash x a m p p forward slash h t docs. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click into this now. So we have our docs here. So now all we need to do is create a folder for a our Drupal project. So we'll go ahead and right click and click new and name our folder Drupal website or anything you want, just as long as you name that folder. So now that we've completed this stage, what we want to do here with this folder is get our Drupal download files. So go ahead and search up the drupal.org forward slash download. Now you'll get this screen here. Go ahead and download the Drupal zip. You'll see this zip folder here. Uh, I've actually got this downloaded now. I'll put this up on screen again, uh, just so you guys can uh, download it from this site. Well, it is Drupal itself, but just the actual page so you guys can find it easier. So now what I'll do is I'll open up another file explorer, just so I can go ahead and download the files into this. So I've got two screens up now. This is the Drupal zip. All you need to do is, as soon as you get it as a zip folder, uh, right click onto it, open with File Explorer, or if you have one RAR, RAR of course, uh, it won't automatically open. Uh, so just right click, open up the zip, and all we need to do from here is Control A, and drag and drop whatever's in this into the Drupal website. So that'll just take a couple of minutes for it to fully uh, transfer over. So I'll fast forward till that is completed. So we've now gained access to the Drupal dashboard. So all we need to do now is do a uh, database configuration, as you can see ahead of us. So all we need to do is create a database. And once we've done this and followed through the different steps, we'll now have gained access to the Drupal site. Now it works the same as WordPress. You can simply just uh, modify and do a couple of add-ons if you want to by clicking manage on the top left but there you go that is how to download drupal but there you go guys that's a little bit about the drupal cms uh, web development tool if you guys found the video helpful please do leave us a comment in the comment section below but other than that i'll see you guys for the next video thank you very much for watching